So continuing the video we were talking about before on the features of the ocean floor, this one uh, will focus mostly on the deep ocean basins, which is the part of the ocean that is covered with water, but up on top of the actual oceanic crust. Now, the main features of that part will be the abyssal plain, the mid-ocean ridges, the seamounts, uh, island chains, uh, guillots, trenches, and also atolls or barrier islands. And we'll talk about each one of these features now. Now, the most obvious thing that you see at, is actually the fact that the abyss, the deep ocean basins are mostly flat ground or like a, a or a, or um, plain basically and that's why we call those re those regions abyssal plains and so you see that in between each continent you have a vast stretch of pretty much flat ground that constitutes as the abyssal plain now in the abyssal plain you would have a striking feature normally right in the middle of the ocean which is the mid-ocean ridge and this mid-ocean ridge is literally a crack in the oceanic crust where magma is seeping through causing the oceanic crust to split and spread and new seafloor to be formed in the middle. So technically what's happening here is a formation of new crust that's making the oceans longer at the mid-ocean ridge. So the mid-ocean ridge is basically uh, a group of island, a group of um, volcanoes. So you, you would have basically a volcanic mountain and then a deep ravine in between them and then another volcanic mountain and then you have the plains on the sides. And so if you look at it from the side, this is what you see. You see two sets of volcanic mountain ranges followed by a deep, deep rift in between. Now in this rift, you will actually have lava seeping through and pushing the uh, mountains apart and, keep gr and the mountains will keep growing that way and will keep making new sea floor uh, in the middle. And that's what's happening at the mid-ocean ridge. So you, you get a... a uh, parallel lines of volcanic mountains surrounded by uh, uh, surrounding a rift it's actually a volcanic rift and then you also have these spotted mountains in the bottom of the abyssal plain and we call those abyssal hills or seamounts now abyssal hills are basically a large seamount all right but a seamount or an abyssal hill basically what they are are magma incursions so uh, and they usually form along a line. And what you see here is a potential formation of a new rift. And that could happen because what's happening here is that magma is trying to punch through at this region and trying to get through the crust. And so every time it does, it creates a seamount. So think of it. You have the flat abyssal plane. And since the crust is so thin, when the magma pushes up, it causes the, the crust to bulge up and form a seamount or a abyssal hill and as this builds higher and higher you might even get an island and what we call a hot spot so a hot spot is an area of high intensive magma activity that's trying to push up against the crust causing the crust to bulge up or deform up formation of a seamount which if it gets large enough it will actually form an island so think of it this way if you have the flat ground and then you have the ocean level higher up or somewhere here and then you have the seamount stretching because of the hot spot if it actually over reaches the surface you get something like Hawaii which is an island forming over a hot spot now because the sea floor is spreading and is stretching from the sea floor chain eventually what that will happen is that this seamount will travel away from the actual hot spot and so what will happen later is that you would have the, the same situation you had before, you would have the, the flat plain and you would have the mountain there and you maybe have the island, right? And then, but now the island is no longer at the hot spot, which is somewhere here. And so a new island will start to form here. And that's why, how you can get an island chain associated with the hot spot. So what you get really is an island that's traveling away from the hot spot. Now what, what normally will happen also is you, you may have also get guillots. Now, guillots are basically seamounts or islands that were once stretched over the surface, but that the waves, just kind of like they do with the ocean, with the, the with the continents, they actually erode the top of the mountain away, and so they basically erode that top off, and what you end up with is a flat 
a, a hill with a flat top because the waves erase that through erosion. And that's what a good yacht is. So you would normally see a, a, a sea mount forming at the hot spot, an island forming after the hot spot, and then a good yacht after that. Basically, because this guyot was once a seamount that then became an island that then became eroded and became a guyot. So a guyot is an island that got eroded pretty much. All right? Or a seamount whose hot is got its top eroded. And then the last feature that we have to talk about is the, is the trench. Now, the trench is basically a large gap in the ocean floor that forms when a continental plate collides with the oceanic crust forcing both of them to kind of verge and bulge up like this. Now, usually the densest one will, uh, will go on the bottom, and the oceanic crust is typically denser. Even though it's thinner, it's made of denser materials. So it will subduct or move underneath the continental plate. And as it does so, it pulls the entire con uh, con uh, oceanic crust with it, and it creates this deep ravine where, because it's basically going into inwards into the earth, and it will create this deep, deep, steep gap into the ocean floor which is a trench and that's the deepest parts of the oceans will be forming at these trenches an example of this is this marina's trench will form which forms between uh, the continental crust of asia and the, and the oceanic crust of the pacific ocean and is the deepest part of the ocean with uh, over 12 kilometers deep very very deep mount everest will, will fit there and then some um, and so Another couple of things you see is all sometimes is island arcs, and those are actually features that, sh that are associated with continental crusts, in which the continental crust bends as a result of the same collision that causes the trench. It bends up and it causes the formation of oceanic crust. We talked about that in the previous video. And the last thing we want to talk about is the idea of an atoll. Now, an atoll or a barrier island is basically not an actual ground or actual land, but it's made of coral reef. Imagine a large, ginormous coral reef that grows on top of itself more and more. Eventually, it may actually form an island. As you can see here, on the top left, you see a barrier island, which is formed of a large, a big, ginormous coral reef that's growing seamlessly together. And eventually, these pieces of coral reef will grow together and form a large island. And that's what it looks like. This is actually a picture of the Great Barrier Reef near Australia. And it basically forms a barrier, and then it will grow eventually to become an island like Florida is. Florida is essentially an island um, that merged with the continent, and it was essentially made of a coral reef. Now, when this happens uh, sometimes in a circular pattern like this, surrounding one larger island that may be uh, uh, a seamount or it may be an uh, island arc or something like that, but when the coral reef barrier island surrounds, it makes almost a perfect circle around an island uh, we call that a atoll and that's pretty much it now that is our little lecture about ocean geography and I hope you understand what everything is and um, the only other things that I have to clarify uh, and before I move on from this is the ideas of um, the slope the continental slope is steep because there's no wave erosion versus the shelf which has a wave erosion the submarine canal, canyon is caused by an underwater landslide that are the collapse of the continental shelf and it causes turbidity currents and, uh, and uh, um, tsunamis. We also have the mid-ocean ridge which is associated with sea force splat sp spreading and abyssal hills and the creation of volcanic mountains so are surrounding the rift and because those mountains are basically uh, bulging the seafloor up you also get fracture zones or areas where the the ground is all shattered because of those mountains. You also have sea mounts, which are magma incursions associated with hot spots in the ocean floor. You have island change, which are associated with folding of the crust because of collisions. The same thing for the trench, which is associated with the subduction zone. And you have the atolls, which are caused by coral reefs. And I hope that all of this is clear. And if you have any questions, make sure that you post it on the on the on the discussion group. And we'll go on from here to talk about ocean sediments on the next video. This is a view of the Google Earth's underwater uh, topography um, evaluation of the seafloor uh, around the world. And you can see the, that it actually gives you a, an idea of how corrugated the ocean floor is. And I want to point out a few things. 
you can see here in the middle of the Atlantic, the butt crack of the world, the large mid-ocean ridge that's, that is making the Atlantic bigger and bigger and making the Pacific smaller and smaller over the years. There is another mid-ocean ridge here in the middle of the Indian, so the Indian is also growing. All right, And you can see here that there's a very, very um, thick boundary surrounding the collision of the Asiatic plate and the Pacific plate, which are colliding like this. So this is a continental plate colliding with the oceanic plate. Uh, meanwhile, this is two ocean, uh, oceanic plates splitting, and which is forcing the Pacific plate to, to go the other way, which is actually what's causing this collision. Now, in this collision, right there, or, and you see that here as well, is where you get these very, this very deep trench that we call the Marinas Trench, which is the uh, deepest trench in the world because it's a collision of the continent versus the ocean right there. And in this case, uh, since it's an oceanic uh, crust versus an oceanic crust, actually, because it's ocean versus ocean, that's where you actually get the deepest uh, crevices. And if you take a look at uh, Tokyo and Japan, what it is, it's an island arc, like that we talked about on the, on the previous uh, drawing. It's forming right after the collision between the continental crust and the oceanic crust. And because the continental crust is being folded up, so it causes this island of the Pacific. And if you look, that actually stretches all the way south. And you can see this island arc forming all the way around the Pacific because of the collision between the Pacific plates and the plates of the Asian countries. So all around this big Pacific rim over here, you get these islands because of the island. It's an island arc that follows the con the the the. the sh the edge of the collision between the plates. So this is a very good example. And we will talk more about this when we actually do geology uh, later in the year. Now, the um, when you actually look at, uh, at this from above, you can actually see that the ocean is made of many different parts. And that's what we're going to talk about on the, nut, on the new video. But I want to show you on this video that you can actually see how at the end of the continental uh, shelf, you suddenly get a drop-off that's called the continental um, slope and then you have the great abyssal plain until you get to another continent on the other side and that's pretty much how it would look like in most oceans all right so i will see i'll see you guys on um, the next video which will talk about ocean floor sediments